check this out folks, I'm starting this video in front of these massive monstrosities of things which is like the wind farm at Drum Derg up here on the hilltop. I can see one of the windmills has got the rotor blades off the front of it and they're lying down on the ground, they're absolutely massive. But in today's video we're actually going to the opposite side of the road here to an old abandoned like farm croft which I first discovered probably like two years ago, I've not been here for ages so I thought since I was in the area I would come back around here and just explore the history folks see what's left from a bygone era over the years often these old abandoned places can change and sometimes they fall down and the history is like gone forever so these videos often keep the wee bits of history alive just look at the view down this way looking probably towards like Aelith and on to the Strathmore Valley so this must have been the original road in here off the hill this is the original farm track coming down the hill here and you have to imagine back in the day when this farm was in operation I think it would have been like old vintage like Fords and Majors like the thing you see me driving at like the Glam's Extravaganza and stuff like that like literally this place probably in the 40s was even like a thriving little farm and then one day it was just obsolete often a bigger farm in the area would have bought over the land and then the house has just got abandoned and left and I think it's a pretty big house down here and there's some cool little details of the farm history areas like this are still used from the current like farmers and shepherds so I'm just hoping I can get down here and document the history we're out, like, we out a farmer chasing us off. I'm still in Perthshire basically since the last episode when I was up in the Pitlochry Kirk Michael direction documenting some more like crazy abandoned history. I'm on my way home from that, this is the same day and I'm out for this next adventure and see down the lighting of this electrical cable I can see the old farmhouse. Places like this have got so much character, folks. I just love to see it. Little abandoned nuggets hidden in these wild lands. So this is an interesting farm because it's got this massive old dam here built into the land. There's been a serious amount of work done. A lot of farms had an idea like this with the dam and then the lead going to the farm mill where there would be like a water wheel or whatever powering it. But this one's pretty cool because the lead has actually been built above the height of the farm road. So it's been an incredible feat of engineering. And then there's been like an overflow going away down a burn. But right at the corner here you can actually see the stone construction. Which would have been the dam of the farm. Just check this out folks. Look at how old that stonework is right there. And you can see the waterway at the other side of it. Incredible scenes. And you can just imagine originally even like the horse and cart and stuff coming down here. Just think how farming was originally. This whole ditch kind of bit around the side could have potentially been maybe another overflow. But it's been properly built like a proper wall with the pebbles. Look at that there. That toadstool or like fungus as you would say. I'm just aware that in areas like this, if you walk about in the grass, there could be ticks. Because most recently I've been in areas which are heavily grazed from sheep. And that's obviously a deterrent against the, the ticks. There's no many ticks in that environment. Whereas when you're in an environment like this, ungrazed, there could be numerous hundreds of ticks in one area. And I'm always just aware of that. Yeah, I think this has been the overflow coming down the side of the road and then the stone lead going to the farm actually is built up at the other side as well. Even that alone is such a feat of engineering back in the day. It's all built with stone and stuff that came from this area. And you can see the height now of the lead on the right hand side. All built with the stone. And it's incredible to think the water would have been flowing through there. They probably had a sluice. They would open it up and that allowed the water to go down through 
to the farm mill and you would just hear it churning. You would hear it slowly speeding up as the water reached it. And it's just mad to imagine those old times at places like this. Just check it out folks, we're walking into an abandoned wonderland here in Scotland. Yeah, this is just mad. It's like a natural garden here with all the colours, with the willow herb and the thistles. And I can just hear the grasshoppers. There's also an area up here which was for like dipping the sheep. And it was like a sheep sort of area. But you can see this stone looks like a wall right along here. And that's actually the lead where the water would have flowed along into the area where the water wheel was at this right hand side of the property. No way, we'll follow the track right around here into the farmyard. You just have to imagine turning up through this gate when this place was a thriving like current farm. Just, rem just imagine the smoke coming out of the chimney. You would maybe get the smell of bacon or the smell of the pot of soup on the stove cooking. And you would hear the noise of the farm, the hustle and bustle. You can imagine the little vintage vehicle stored in here or whatever. Maybe originally the horse would have been in here overnight and then as the years progressed they maybe kept like a wee car or whatever in there. Wow, this is so interesting folks. I love these old buildings and remains of the farm and heritage. And around a farm like this there's been a lot of years of development and change. Yeah, see since the last time I came, probably like two years ago, this roof has now fallen down at the corner of this building. And that's why I say how it's cool to document these places before that happens. Check this out, the old house. Look at the way the bushes is growing up out of it. It's almost eerie like a horror film. So you can see the original house has been over here and then this bit's been added on. Maybe at a later time they, they had an, in, an indoor bathroom which was obviously adopted and brought to houses after many years. Originally they would have had an outhouse where they would have relieved themselves obviously. Sometimes at farms the farmer would just literally go into the cow shed to do his business. But then as the years progressed they obviously had bathrooms and showers. Well most likely baths in a place like this. Showers were a later addition to the Scottish countryside. Look at this here, it's an old cheese press folks and I love to see history like this. You would have screwed the big handle at the top and that would have winched up and down this big block and that was for the manufacture of the cheese on the farm here. And a lot of farms had these. This handle's most likely been broken off because it got seized and they were probably levering against it and it just broke off the old cast. Sometimes the old metals like that. This will date back to probably the early days, like the twenties or before it. Definitely in the forties. I can just imagine this place in its prime. It's the sort of place. Maybe all the heirs to the farm ended up going to war or whatever, and then there was nobody to take the farm on. It maybe just got sold on. There could be any story related to a place going abandoned like this. Just check this out here. Just think of the family living in there folks. Look there's been an upstairs with a wee, wee, wee window looking out over that magnificent view we saw on the way down the road. And then there's just been incredible views the whole way around from this farm. And these are like ivy trees, uh, holly trees I mean folks. And just think these holly trees would have been planted when this house was in its prime. Probably tiny little saplings in the ground here. And I can't believe the size of this ivy-like tree that's growing up the wall here. Look at it, the way it's rooted right in behind the wall. And then look at it, the way it's growing up. It's almost a fairy tale scene when you see that right there. And I love the shape of these windows here. Almost with the 1800s character with a small like square panes of glass and a little yard like this it's just incredible to imagine what all went on when they were out here making the cheese the noise of the farm yard 
the old horse and cart just coming trundling round the corner. And this here must have been the farmhouse garden and there would have been a wee gate on here. And then this outline of the wall here in front, you can see they must have had sometimes vegetables and things planted, but also just random like plants or whatever. Most farmhouses had a wee garden like that for the farmhouse. And then look at this, this has been another little building out the front. Like some old shed. You can see how there's been a doorway here, judging from the original lintels. But then it's been changed at different times. It's almost like those openings have been original there and there. And that's often the size a door would have to be originally, whereas that's how farms went outdated. The sheds often just got too small for like the modern needs of a farm. You wouldn't be able to fit your tractor in out of those wee doors. Look, the roof's properly falling off this place now. Wow, this proper wind just coming fleeing through here. Look at this, we're right in the heart here of farming history. And as you can tell from the roof, it's falling down and getting destroyed every year. So let's see what remains right now. And just imagine the pig or whatever tied here with the rope, eating its food. There's been another one at this side as well. And then in at this side there's been... This could have been a pig shed, I reckon. Because it was probably kept in here and then at feeding time maybe led across to the trough and tied. And that wind just coming down off the hill there, it would have had fresh air if the, if the farmer opened this. These floors were obviously shaped so they were easily cleaned. The farmer could come along with the shovel. And it's just incredible to see, look at these wee stalls. This one's like a separate stall here. But it's still got the rope, like the rope on it and the bits to tie it to. Yeah, internal fittings may have even been later on. In the 40s and things, I could imagine this being a key hub of the farm, maybe quite near the farmhouse as well, for easy access. Oh, wait, look at this shed here, folks. Look, it's got a cutout in the wall. It looks like a fireplace. This is the sort of place there'll likely be rats here under the floor. That's what I'm wary of. But I'm actually wanting to just see if there's a chimney going up here. Is there? Yes, there is, folks. Check that out. So that shows this may have been, like, likely to have been a wall with a fire, maybe to heat the shed. I don't think it's been, like, an old croft, maybe building or bothy. And often, maybe in the winter, they had to heat the shed for the animals. See, that's the kind of history I love to find. I had never seen that before. And it's interesting to theorise, like, what they were doing. Maybe there was even a shepherd or whatever that would stay in here. And he needed a wee fire at night to keep warm. But also, if they were lambing and stuff like that, they would need to have a warm environment for that. So that'll be another reason they had the fire, probably. There may have even been just, like, a little stove that sat in there, burning away. Peek out the back. See, this is out to the side where the original farmyard kind of area was. Just check that out. I got a fright there, folks, because there was something rustling with the wind. But yeah, there's like little sheds just leading right down through all this wilderness. Everything's so overgrown at this time of year. Last time I was here, I theorised that was one of the original farm houses on the site but since then I've learned that's actually the old mill shed up there at the top it's all been filled in with like scrap and kind of like earth but that's there's evidence there where the old mill wheel had been and that's basically where that lade was leading to that we saw when we first came into this site look at this obviously the door's still here but look there's been an even older door in this frame because there's the bit that it attached into just check it out, that's probably the original historical door right there that we're seeing. Yeah, it's just mad, folks. Mad places in the middle of nowhere. Like, you you really don't know. See, that door doesn't open. Look at the old Bakelite light switch right there. Yeah, let's head on with this adventure. 
Yeah, sometimes with these places, you just never know what you're about to see. Even if you've been somewhere before, you always see a bit of history that you never noticed before. Just look at this angle of the old house there. And another interesting detail, look at the square nail trapped in there between the bracks. I don't know how well that comes out on the camera, but those old square nails were actually made from like a blacksmith. And often it was the apprentice's job at the blacksmith shop to like make the nails. That would be one of their first jobs probably, to learn the forge and the workings of metal. And then look at this here, there's been another animal enclosure here. It's quite cool to see. Farms like this were so big compared to some of the other hill crofts that we've seen on adventures. And another interesting thing with this farm, it's actually got its own little lime kiln over there at the far side. You can imagine the wee animal like living in here. Look, here's a cool detail, folks. Look, there's a metal loop there on the wall. That must have been to tie the animal to whatever, the pig or the sheep or whatever th creature was out here. Could have been a pig like, but I'm not sure if they would have had the pig shed like inside as well as here. This could be an even older pig enclosure at this end from an ancient time. And then look at that for here, it's just mad. This whole roof has fallen in since the last time I was here. Again, over the years, all these roofs fall in because it's those heavy stone slabs. It's often because of the weight of the the stone slabs on the roof that the when the wood rots out below them it just completely falls down and that's like what we've seen here whoa there's loads of butterflies and stuff flying around up here wow look at it now no way last time i came it did not look like this but there's been so many storms and things every year places like this decay there's an old cooker there and that must have come out of the house and then there's loads of parts here for a Citroen 2CV. Seats, door, it's like wings and a bonnet. Mostly doors and things though. I think that must be a boot lid. And then there's a rear wing there for Ian. Everything's just rotted. This has been a cool shed at one time though. It's had little compartments at the side. Maybe at one time this was the hay loft here and you can imagine them throwing the the hay up through the hole and then they probably had another hole somewhere with the where they would throw it back down when they were like unloading it maybe that's what that was for also maybe for the ventilation originally coming into the room that is interesting folks look at that there's been lights and that up here as well crazy scenes and look at this we're just overlooking the farm for here It's amazing to think as well, like how long ago these steps and stuff were laid, way back at that time. This farm must have been such a thriving farm and for it to go abandoned, it's just such a shame. The years that it must have stood here, thriving in its prime, and then one day it was just no longer needed. And from an area like this, you get a true aspect of the farm, you can kind of see it and you see the chimney from that end wall where we looked inside that room. And it is interesting just to see how the old mill shed is as well at the top. You can really see the layout of this farm and this must have been a, a central kind of courtyard but you can imagine maybe the cows roaming about in here. The farmer would throw a bale out. Or they wouldn't have had so much of a bale back then but just like a pile of the straw or hay or whatever they were dealing with. Let's keep heading around this way, folks. I'm just keeping the camera on for an adventure like this. It's just a mad bit of history out here in the countryside of Scotland. Look, look at the size of these lintel stones above the doors. Massive pieces of sandstone. This one here has broken. And look, from the outside, you can see the original openings. And this is, above my head, a super dangerous bit to look. To stand under because that's the room we were just looking in for above look at the old feeding trough thing there and then this is cool here look at this the old cooker out of the house 
That's mad, folks. Look, the bit of wood's proper come down and smashed into it. Look, it must have been doing, like, hot and cold water as well. So that shows that we're getting the hot water in that for the fire. That's what a lot of countryside houses is like. Whoa, and right above me right now is super dangerous because that's where we saw the whole roof down at this corner now. This has been some little corner shed. I'm wanting to go and have a look in the actual farmhouse as well in a minute, folks. I'm just taking a quick look in these little side sheds to get an idea of the farming history and heritage that's left. See, there's been openings in that wall there as well. So interesting, eh? It's the age of this property and the buildings. This path would have probably been well kept and well maintained at the early days. And I think there's been a wee gate there because I can see the stone's got a hole in it. And you can imagine the noise of the animals out in places like this. Wow, there's a proper breeze coming down through here, folks. It's the breeze of the glen. I'll head out below this super dangerous roof. I'm staying near the edge. I'm not going in the middle because it looks like that side there is going to collapse first. Wow, yes, we're in the middle of this wilderness, folks. The long grassy terrain at this time of the year is just insane to see. Look, this lintel's proper broken and fallen. Whoa. There's been big doors here as well. I can see the remains of them, which is left. And over at the other side of this field, that's where the lime kiln was. And a lot of farms had that. They would actually burn the limestone until it was in its powdered form and then they spread it on the fields for better yields. And when you see them, it almost looks like a door into some underground cavern. But that's what that is at the far side of the field there. But this one here has been filled with scrap and it's right in the middle of like a boggy area and it's super like deep mud. That's why I'm not going to walk over there right now. But yeah, we'll take a look in the farmhouse and then we'll go and take a look up where the water wheel used to be located. Because that's some of the coolest bits here. But this building here could be one of the oldest buildings, I would say, on the site. I think the ones with the red lintel stones and that around the doors seem to be the oldest ones. And that's what we see up at the mill shed as well. I'm going to take a look in the front door here and then we'll take a look in that section there. I'm wanting to figure out where that big fireplace came from and I think it might be actually in the other bit. The other bit of the house around the corner. But we'll have a look in here first folks. Just check out the history. See at this time of year you can get a lot of wasp bikes in the ground and I've seen a few of them like now and again you just see the wasps coming fleeing out and in the hole. Look at that, eh? We're in the middle of a crazy scene. Abandoned farmhouse history right here. And one day this roof must have just collapsed in. And since there, since that time, nature's just been taken back over. This must have been where the door used to lead through to the kitchen area. And then the, the rest of the house, the living room and the bedrooms, must have been through here. A lot of the time with these farming houses and farming families they would spend most of their days in the kitchen area they would have it more with the fire on 24 hours a day and there would always be something cooking or like when they came in they would just sit in the kitchen rather than the living room that was just the farming way in scotland i'll take a quick look around this side of the building as well folks we'll leave no stone unturned here yeah this is savage look at this hey, this is where the the way your own pipes come down, I can see it's got this facing on it here with the harlan, but below that I can see the old sandstone it's built with. And it's quite impressive to see. I'm not sure if it had the harlan on it from day one when it was built, or if there was different sections built at different times. Yeah, look at the character of this with the old windows. The way it's built with the the wee wooden panes. I'm thinking this house may have been built in the 1800s or definitely added to. Maybe those bigger square windows are the ones which was put in at that time. And you can see the smaller windows and they're maybe the older ones. 
because originally some of the Scottish houses wouldn't have, wouldn't have had glass. Some of the farms and crofts in these lands dates back to times like before that they would have had wooden shutters. And look, there's little windows there as well. It's almost hard to tell where the original structure had been. So I was just thinking there folks, that window in the house lines up with the front door so I'm not sure if there had been maybe a lobby so when you came in the front door it wasn't pitch dark there was maybe a lobby with the window at the end and then the doors leading off to the rooms at each side Look at this, this window here is quite intact Look at the shape of the wood It wasn't just plain wood back in those days It's had something else put on it here at a different time Maybe they used to feed a bird or something there by putting a bit of food out for it. Look at that, you can see how this has been built on at a different time as well. That's how the house might predate 1800s. Maybe some of this stuff was put on. I would say when I see construction like that, this was a 1900s for sure add-on. Maybe what they did was put a more modern like kitchen into it. And maybe they were just updating it overall at that time. It could have even been at the time they put the electricity into the building. No way, look at this. This window here has got character because look how overgrown it is. It's like coming to a post-apocalyptic world out here. So let's just take this all in, folks. Look at this angle of this property. You hate to imagine the farmer when he was coming out and in this door. A place like this has just got a crazy vibe, and I do say it often, it's like a post-apocalypse. If you went to planet Earth years after humans had disappeared, it's places like this you would find, like overgrown from nature. And look at this, there's a clue here to how worn the front doorstep was. It's been cemented in. Often they got so worn from the people coming out and in. Because at one time there was a thing called tackety baits, when you chapped in little tackets into the bottom of your boots and like once they wore out you would chap new ones in and it was like little studs and that's how a lot of farm doors or areas people were walking they used to get worn really quick and that could be why that had been cemented in and repaired this is a cool little room though folks i've seen this up the glens a lot the houses were often lined with a wooden finish like this yeah check that out it's got the round plugs right there. So that shows it's like pre-1980s. All this was fitted. For sure. But we had an idea of that. It looked like, I don't know, probably like 1940s. It's been upgraded or whatever and fitted out potentially. Maybe even earlier. There's been a sink or whatever here. Yeah, there's a fire extinguisher lying. I'm not sure if a place like this even went on fire. It could have perished in a fire. There's another one of those cool light switches. Still goes, it still works. Check it out. It's actually got wood worm in the backboard of it right there, folks. Insane scenes right here. Now look at this. I'm sure the last time I came in there was proper sinks, like butler sinks as you would call them, and I think somebody's hauled them out. And look, you can see where the fresh water feed comes into this building. Because there it is. That just shows folks, places like this will be fed from a spring. And it's just flowing so perfectly, that would be probably decent drinking water right there. And this must have been the little kitchen with the sinks here and the shelves, maybe a bit of a larder. And look, it's had blue paint here, but then at a later time, look, there's been wiring and stuff. Yeah, from the look of that, it's like there's been smoke damage potentially in here. And it looks like it's from the wiring. See, maybe if something's gone on fire through the house, it started shorting out. And then it's been burning other areas in the house. That's almost what I'm thinking now. And look, I think there's been a cooker here, because that's one of those asbestos sheets that you used to get for the wall. Yeah, so I think they've had a cooker and then the sink. And I can see it's had like the flagstone floor. And the old lead pipe there leading down. 
and underneath the floor. And then this must have been where they hung like a towel or whatever. Yeah, it's just insane scenes of abandoned history, folks. And this was potentially the door the farmer went out and in every morning. Out to the hard graft on the hill. Out in the cold winds. All conditions. And just look how overgrown this is at this time of year. I was thinking this must have been the room here where that fire is that we saw in the shed. The old cooking range. It had been located there. And originally in that area, it would have had like an open fire with a cast iron range in it. Like what we've seen in abandoned cottages recently, where you can actually fold the pot above the stove, above the open fire, in the old kettle. And then at a later time, this place has been changed and evolved. They filled the front in with cement and brick. Probably even potentially a water tank behind that wall. And that's what was linked into that fire that we saw in the shed. So it's interesting to see how this property had been developed and then upkept to the latest of technologies for so many years. And then one day, like I say, it's weird. It's like in the 1940s or something. It was just fitted out and it was looking good. Maybe, maybe somebody dodgy had even fitted some electronics and that was its downfall. It maybe went on fire. Or like I theorised earlier, maybe... All the heirs to this farm went to, went to war. And then maybe the patrons of the farm just like died. Look at this here. There's been another thing here. And I think this was one of those blocks for like cleaning your boots. You would go like that. It was like a metal loop that you could scrape your boots on after a hard day's work. And some old farms used to actually have that on the front doorstep. Yeah, anyway folks, let's head on with this adventure. It's been mad and I've just loved seeing what we've seen. Anything really like abandoned history is just so interesting. And when I was coming along the top of this glen, I just remembered about this place and I thought I hadn't been here for so long. I just wondered what was left of the history. Probably a lot of the viewers that watch my channel now have never even seen this place before. So it's cool just to share it with the world. I can see there's some massive birds of prey circling up above this forest here. So check this out folks, this here is the old mill shed. And this is basically the shed here that was getting powered. The mill would have been in this shed at the far end. It's all been filled in now pretty much. But we can see the evidence of it coming from the water wheel pit at the far side. This is proper overgrown conditions. I can just hear the grasshoppers and the buzzards. Or I think they're buzzards anyway. It could be anything up here, folks. It could be anything from eagles to kites, buzzards to sparrow hawks. You never know what you're going to see. Crazy amounts of animals. Yeah, see, there had been a shaft, I believe, driving through under into this shed. We need to look at this incredible detail of the history right here. See here folks, this is where the water wheel had been. Look how cool this is. You can see the evidence where the water's been coming down from that lead that we looked at on the way in. It is a wee bit windy here, but look, we're right out on the moor. Yeah, we looked at a lead when we came in, folks, right along the side of the main road, and this is where it leads to. And you have to imagine the water wheel churning in here. Flaying around and churning, like the water was coming out. Miles, well, no miles, but like, what would it be? Probably like a good 300 metres. They had actually built this massive sluice like this with huge stones and it's crazy that feat of engineering leads all the way from that dam to here and look you can see the red stone here that's the red surrounding stone where the mill shaft had gone in from the center of the wheel leading into that shed there or potentially there was even another shed like here which is gone but i believe it had been this other shed and the reason i think that's the connection is because you can actually see the red stone above the door of this place and that's what they used to do back at that time for the finishing stones around the windows and doors 
and also you can see how the windows and doors are in funny places and that's the character of a mill shed folks there's just been a crazy amount of sheds here the whole way around the outside and that's it folks we're about to head on but i'm thinking i'll head up this way now out of this site see that overhead there folks that's actually wind clouds that we're witnessing that's a sign it's going to be like super windy pretty soon even though it's windy right now we can actually see the wind clouds here which means there could be a storm brewing there could be a storm on the horizon when you see that and it could get super windy pretty soon yeah i'm gonna head on out around the other side of this shed i think i'm gonna see how overgrown it is see the amount of butterflies today folks there's just hundreds of them it's just prime butterfly season out here on the hill. Just think under our feet here leads the incredible laid all the way to there. And I'm always blown away by these old constructions. Most likely this would have had a roof on it at one time and it would have been the wheel shed. And that was the latest in farming technology at that time. That was the equivalent of a farm having like a combine. And the way this one's built and constructed, this would have been the finest combine. It would have been one of the most impressive lades in the area. Because often they're above, above ground and they're crudely made. Whereas this one flows away. Like, flows away through like the complete structure that they've built. And I'm not sure where the water supply is coming for that house, but it's certainly bubbling out of the ground. Right folks, we can say goodbye to this ancient historical wonder here, hidden in the wild hills of Perthshire. And it's been such a fun adventure to come down here. Now I need to try and get my way back out this forest track, without getting attacked by any of these crazy creatures that are flying about. That stone structure to my left with the sluice within it, well the laid, it's actually above my head height, it's probably like 10 foot high which is another impressive point about it. It's like a 10 foot high water laid. Look at this folks, this is what I was saying about the overflow. Look how it's built with the base of pebbles. Whoa, a bee or a wasp just flew right into my ear folks. I was just saying, look how it's built with the pebbles. See when something like that flies into your ear, it's horrible. Look at this folks. This is actually us on the edge of the dam. So this is interesting folks, this is where the original stone laid height goes out below the level of the water here. It leads on away down there and all this has been breached when the river's been high. This has all been carved out at a later time. And a place like this is now filled up with so much sediment and debris. And I'm sure when I came here the water was so low that there was actually a, a safe there with like no door on it. Somebody must have busted the safe open, throwing it in the middle of the water. But one time like when the water was low you could just clearly see it. This whole embankment I'm standing on has been built with stone at that ancient time. Credit the, to the construction of this whole area. The overflow leads right around the outside of here and I'm guessing it must come out further up at the top. But at this time of year everything's so densely like overgrowing check this out here as well folks look at the fungus on the edge of the water here crazy looks like a golf ball there's all different types this is often the time of year now for the crazy funguses in the woodlands check out this mystical forest landscape here folks i love the way these little roads just kind of weave through the trees and there's just not a sound but the wind in the trees here and the sound of the odd buzzard making its call it was crazy to see how much that building had changed since like two years ago when i went there probably in like the early days of exploring places like that it was just mad to see how much it's changed and don't forget folks tell your friends and tell your family BKRs out here all the time doing these adventures, exploring things it's never seen, documenting things which is undocumented in these lands, telling the story of the crazy history here in Scotland. 
It's just mad what's often hidden round the corner when you're exploring. And it's mad the things you see when you're on your way to explore a location. It's often like some Jurassic landscape. Or some ancient landscape. Look at the way the moss is like growing over this tree. Check it out folks, I'm back out as far as the massive windmills and I'm on the main road. I can actually see there's a tractor coming up here with a huge trailer load of bales. And I'll get off the road obviously. He'll be needing to keep his momentum going to go up this steep hill. We'll see how he gets on. It looks like it's a Valtra. No way, look at this. Look at the colour here. These would almost look like thistles, but they're not. Everywhere in Scotland just looks like a wild meadow at this time of year. And there's a fair of wine comes off those wind turbines for sure. Whoa, there's just hundreds of butterflies. Here we go, here comes the tractor folks. For the outro of this video, we're getting a tractor. I think he's dropping a couple of gears. Let's see how he gets on here. Oh, he's pulling in, he's dropping like three gears right here folks, letting the car fast. Not only is he letting the car pass, he's actually trying to keep his momentum going. Cool man. That's farming life here in the Glen. I wasn't even wanting to just stick the camera right in the boy's face. Shout out if that's you. I got out of the way because he was trying to like pull over and let the car pass. But he wasn't trying to stop. Because see on a hill where a trailer load left, you wouldn't get going again so easily. Anyway, I just love adventures like that, folks. Once again, we've been in the wilderness of Scotland. We've seen a wee bit of history, documented a bit of the wilderness, and we've gotten chased by some of the fleeing about beasts that you get at this time of year. And I'll end this one in front of these massive, modern day electrical generators, folks. Just like back in the day, they were using the water wheel down at the farm to power their mill. This is a modern way they're powering things with the natural resources around them. Anyway, I'm ending this one here, folks. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll be back soon with the next Dean, wherever I end up going. Thank you.